I'm gonna die. Coming outside. I wrote these two sentences in longhand in a cafe in the Tenderloin neighborhood of San Francisco. I am Kathy Acker. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> oh, this old thing? My bullet wound was cancer. This life, it's a bullet wound. Reincarnation. We die over and over. For this go round the Ferris wheel, I thought I'd be a growly bear. That's how I imagined it, though a poetic fact can sometimes get lost in translation. In 1990, my crystal ball needed polishing. Clearly, that's not a euphemism. I'm not stressing it. At least I was kind of close. Animal, mineral, vegetable, growly bear, <laughs> tiger. It came to me in a vision in the Pussy Pirate book. I'm gonna die. Coming outside. A growly bear. This is better. Look at me. I have an awesome tiger haircut. And a cock. <laughs> when I was just a cub, I used to crawl down to the man-made pond, stare at my reflection, and laugh and laugh and laugh. Oh, if they could see me now. Ohio! What a trip. I polish my crystal ball twice a day now. Maybe next time I'll come back as a Pulitzer Prize. I traced that into the linoleum with my pencil cloths. I'm dead in the kitchen. There goes my soul. It's dribbling out my eye socket. Up, up and away. Again. Over and over. The policemen are holding hunting rifles. Some are smoking and dropping ashes on the tiles. Terry Thompson's feet are prone. His skin is purple. I can't believe they haven't removed his corpse yet. A photographer flashes over and over. He's from the AP or Reuters. I wonder if we'll all go to the morgue together. Terry set us free this morning, 2 a.m. Most of us crept through the pre-dawn darkness towards a wilderness that doesn't exist. I stuck around to see what Terry was up to. He put the hunting rifle between his legs, took off his shoes and socks. It was also Hemingway-esque. Bang. The body fell to the floor. I pushed the screen door open with my bulk, and I put his head in my mouth, crunching down just a bit. I must have left a mark because they wrote about it in the paper. What they didn't realize is that I wasn't trying to eat him. I perform emergency brain surgery. I was using my tongue to scoop his brains back into his skull. Terry was brilliant. A healer, really. Misunderstood. The cops came in to investigate, saw me with my mouth around Terry's body, and shot me on the spot. Right through the eye. Yet another hunting rifle. This moment takes longer than I remember. Dying stops time for a second. I can hear the television anchorman. He is at a safe distance. My leg jolts in a rigor mortis spasm. His eye twitches. The anchorman is this close to doing a Queenie correspondent on the spot viral video, oh shit, it's a spider, it's a tiger routine. An instant YouTube sensation. Let's laugh while he screams. Four million hits. Every time a clip is liked, an angel gets his wings. <laughs> Hooray, America. We are united in our cruel humor. Ta Kathy takes her place on the ground, prone. Queenie newscaster is holding a microphone, approaches her, stands at a somewhat risky distance to her pencil cloths. The Kathy lion corpse is still 
And then, bang! A claw dots out and another spasm. The newscaster loses it, screaming to Roger, the cameraman. It just moved. Roger! Oh shit! It's not dead. Roger, what did I say? We should have done this shot from the driveway and not the kitchen. It's gonna eat me. I'm not scared of snakes, or the dark, or nothing. Just cats. Big cats, great big pussy! Cats, oh shit. <laughs> it's gonna eat me. It's gonna bite my fucking head off! Pussy cat, pussy cat! Fuck, fuck, fuck! Relax, dude. The, the floor is covered in his brains, man. The animal is dead as a door now. <clears throat> Can we cut that tape? Yeah. You're gonna lose that. Uh, let's do that again. Thank God this isn't live, Roger. Destroy that tape. <laughs> <laughs> Is my hair okay? Give me a hanky. Got one? Makeup! Makeup! <sighs> okay, Roger, ready? Let's do this thing. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> There were 13, or at least 10, tigers, according to the books. 50 animals in all, valued at over $1 million. Rest easy, residents of Zaneville. Every wild animal has been shot, killed, or tagged, carted off to the community college, science lab for testing. There isn't room enough in the morgue. Cut. Uh... I guess we should get on that story. The one about the assholes who tried to steal a carcass. Roger, did we get the shot? The shot, Roger! Roger, Roger, Earth to Roger! Don't call my brother an asshole. <laughs> Joe is Roger's brother. <laughs> this is Joe. He's hot. <laughs> I would like to fuck him with my tiger cock. <laughs> hey, I'm Joe. Uh, so, me, uh, Ricky, Bobby, and Johnny, and it was Duck driving, uh, we saw all the animals lined up on the highway, and we thought we'd make some jerky, some venison. I don't know why we did it. I was still wearing my ankle bracelet from the last time I got caught up in their bullshit. <laughs> but there was a lot of whiskey involved. And I'll do anything for a little sip. They call me the party animal. <laughs> I tried to pick up the tiger myself and threw my back out. I thought I'd be stuffed like a beanie baby. But its fingernails were giant pieces of pencil lead. The guys laughed, and that got me laughing. I just about pissed my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark out, and our breasts made clouds in the flashlight streams. <laughs> Duck and Ricky moved the tiger's arms like it was a giant puppet. Tigger! Meow! <laughs> Swung it around like that. One guy in the front, one guy on the back. Heavy as a fridge, trying to swing it up in the back of the truck. About to kept the bumper, hitting the bumper with a thud. Boom! Boom! The damp air held a sound like a lover. The brown cat's eyes rolled around googly, catching giant glint from our torches. The other two guys, they stumbled over to grab handfuls of hide, the ribs slippery underneath the organs that don't play no more. I guess we should have moved quicker because all of a sudden Dr Duck, he drops his side and he starts running for the woods. That's when I see them red and blue lights and Johnny shouts, oh shit! The cops came, they snagged me on account of my bad back, and it's hard to run when you have an ankle bracelet. 
It makes a lot of clinking noises. And my brother Roger used to call me Jacob Marley. Those chains! Those chains! <laughs> now I'm in this cage. I'll probably do 18 months. It goes by quick. I got some hobbies. I like to masturbate. <laughs> See, I pretend like I'm a gorilla. And the warden, he's an old man who visits me at the zoo. <laughs> One day some shit will go down. That's why I always think there's a park bench with his name on it. Edward Albee told me so. I read about it in Zanesville High. AP honors, the whole nine yards. See, I was going to be an actor before all this, before I realized I needed money to do that. It's cheaper to work here, keep a motorcycle, drink for fun, do dumb shit like this, and write poems. You know what my favorite sound in the world is? It's a cage being closed. Just call me monkey. I wonder what that venison would have tasted like, though. Lion jerky. We could have made a fortune. Sold on eBay, used the cash for acting lessons. Then I'd go to HP Studios and do the real zoo story. Off Broadway. <laughs> Maybe find a boyfriend too. They always do in the clink, so it's not bad. Enough so that my arms grow hairy and my chest sprouts. And sometimes I bang it with both fists. And when I come, the warden, he looks up from his paper, all grossed out. <laughs> sometimes they pa pass a mop through the bars, and making me clean it myself. I like the smell, though, like bleach. It feels like the cell's clean when I do that, even though it just gets sticky. It feels wet on my bare feet. I wonder when my Terry will set me free, or will I get shot, or maybe an acting award, and <laughs> the boyfriends never talk to me on the outside. I see them at the food line and they walk, look right through me. Sometimes their skin flushes. I guess that's, that's a compliment. Hey, Warden! What's your fucking dinner? Terry Thompson is unreliable. Like this bistro table. He wobbles when he walks. His voice tremolos when he talks. He is rough around the edges, as we like to say around here, gruff. Sometimes his mouth is painted a deep purple, like the top of a wine jug, Kool-Aid man. This is usually on Sunday. He never goes to church. He's not a man I care too much for. And now I don't really have to, but I needed to be here today at his wake. because he gave me my little boy back. You see, my son's autistic. Mondays and Wednesdays provide a steady stream of field trips at the Muskingum County Animal Farm. Terry coordinates visits with the local school district, <coughs> a flat rate paid up front. Teachers send permission forms home to be filled out, asking parents for a fee of 10 bucks about the price of two Happy Meals, but the experience is worth it. Children are allowed up-close views of exotic animals they've only seen before in books. For these kids, the trip is equivalent to going to Jurassic Park. These fields might as well be the jungle. These are children raised on concrete playgrounds, fed on Happy Meals, and piss as we all are. The baby animals are dosed with a mild sedative. Nothing too altering, but enough to keep the docile and dewy-eyed animals down. One autistic fourth grader speaks for the first time as he holds a tiger cub in his lap. He strokes the animal and cries, I love you, I love you. His mother is a chaperone. She writes Terry a letter disclosing that she has forgotten the sound of her own child's voice until that day. He tapes this letter to his refrigerator. There's a brown spot stain on the letter now. It is a skull fragment. My son has that spirit in the sky, crimson and clover, super high type of voice, shiny like a brass trumpet, but tremolo, or early electronic sounding, something at once old timey and from outer space. Not steampunk, mind you, more like an angel.
I teach psychology and sociology and criminology and the fine arts seminar and the poetry seminar. And finally, remedial reading at Muskingum Community College. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> this whole thing has an air of Greek myth. <laughs> Sociopathology. <laughs> Did you hear one of the animals ate Terry's head or tried to after he'd fallen to the linoleum in the kitchen? He's talking about me. Most of the police had used the opportunity to get as far away from the ranch as possible, seeking out new territories and hopeful for a wilderness that just, just doesn't exist anymore. What a beautiful service this is. <laughs> they have been microchipped, and everyone has a cell phone now. There's no escaping the gaze. <laughs> hey, newscaster, you take a picture with your iPhone, a picture of me with a bullet in my eye. It is elegantly cropped. You upload it to your profile, seeking assurance of beauty. The picture gets seven likes. This is satisfactory. <laughs> Three friends comment with these phrases. Rot in hell. Good riddance. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> you read this thread and laugh out loud while you check your profile on the TGI Fridays. Anessa Baby Robbins has been found in the rain track outside the restaurant. A cleaning person is batting at it with a straw broom. A child watches from its booster seat. One of the birds falls from the gutter and lands on the concrete. It waddles on jelly legs into some shrubbery where a radio speaker has been hidden. Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run blares from the restaurant speakers. Tramps like us, baby, we were born to run. Why don't you go fuck yourself again with that tiger bomb? <laughs> I hear it has soothing power. Why am I not a Pulitzer Prize yet? Why am I still here in this hairy body without agency? Is this some kind of a test? The conversation you could have with your lover disappears, and the buffalo burger is consumed in silence. You each edge further from the other, like magnetic force in reverse, and slow down to imperceptibility. Your hiccup is an earthquake. You check your grinder account. Another missed opportunity. Status update. The last living rhino in Vietnam was killed today by poachers. Unhappy face emoticon. <laughs> <laughs> the weather turned on the protesters in Zuccotti Park. Thousands of dollars in equipment destroyed by a sudden rainstorm. Now they use desktop casings instead of tabletops, table legs, and place hot meals on a piece of plywood for the occupiers. The homeless, who used to sleep in the park, are gone. They are all in jail now. Fifty zoo animals. I saw a young man holding this sign, gentrify the homeless. It got seven likes. They get one meal a day and no phone call. Rights are red willy-nilly. Who cares when your brain is scrambled eggs? They are lazy. I can't pay my student loans. I beat my chest, chimpanzee style. I stick my tongue out. Hand <laughs> me a cigar and a slogan. I'm not homeless. I'm occupied. <laughs> the homeless are preoccupied. Now they're caged. At the HB Studios, I pretend I'm James Dean. Endlessly talented priest don't walk queer. Can someone take this bracelet off my ankle? <laughs> I want to drive my roadster at top speed, dreaming of topping Salmon Nino. <laughs> oh, Joe. You look better with my glasses off. The light here is softer than I remembered. I can hear the two children crying from their window in the backyard. What were you thinking with your wild jerky? <laughs> from the window, it looks like an overturned toy box. The brothers watch guts spill slowly from the tiger's side. One of my pride. Their mother is playing a church service over the radio, and the music mingles with their racing minds. 
One brother smells incense. The other, older one, smells cum. Joey, if you're hurting, so am I. Look at him. He walks like a healer. He's got the feng shui of Rambo. Or Rambo, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> there is a zoo. And it is free now. If only slightly. I know why the caged bear shits itself. <laughs> <laughs> this is a suicide note. I am dying in a field outside of Zanesville. A river of blood bubbles up from the place where my eye used to be. My heart is telling a story very slowly in whispers. The whispers sound like bird calls, and more animals come, thinking I am friendly. Their guns go up to the sky. On a clear day, you could see Columbus. Did you know it is the gay capital of the Midwest? A baboon stalks the horizon, looking for trash to eat. Maybe some old sliced ham with mold on it. Smashed eggshells tarnished from the dye of a JCP circular in the Sunday newspaper. He pulls the pieces from a ripped garbage bag and puts them in his mouth. This is called survival. Joe, that's the way I describe you. Do you like it? Or does it seem too submissive? The lion looked right at me in the grocery store parking lot. The food lion from the sign. That's our supermarket, the food lion. And this one was seated like an obedient dog. Fetch, Leo. I got in my escort and called the police with my iPhone. I took a picture and uploaded it, and it got seven likes. <laughs> it's like Noah's Ark in reverse. I build the ship, and then we are all shipwrecked. The flood is in my wet brain. The cops take turns with their crosshairs. Team building exercise. They ask to have the carcasses stuffed. There's a guy in town who does it for free as a gesture of goodwill for the men. He calls them heroes. The animals are mounted on wooden plaques. They make a noise in the back of the truck. It is the sound of objects. One is delivered to each officer wrapped in butcher paper. The funny thing is, I sold them these guns three years ago out of my barn, running guns on the black market. I used the cash for more bird seed and meal for my animals. And now I'm dead. The cops use my black market guns to kill my children. Irony. Thank you, wild animals. If you see something, Shoot something! <laughs> if you see something, it, it is yours. Uh, you are a lord of it. It is for you. This is the law of the land. As far as you can see, Simba, this land is your responsibility. <laughs> you are a king in captivity. You were born with your crown and your student loan debt. All you have to do is put it on and wear it to your funeral. Maybe this is possession. This morning I climbed a hill before I shot myself, and at the top of this hill I found a pigeon. I was eating a turd, a human turd in the park. The bird was picking out the chunks that hadn't lost their nutrients. Can't all be waste that our bodies throw out. It could be called impatience. Johnny Appleseed wasn't tossing seeds, he was shitting them. Everyone has this idea that he was an altruistic young man. Really, he just loved apples. And he had irritable bowels. <laughs> There's no such thing as a middle class. There's a beginning and an end, but no middle. No autistic tiger left behind. At community college, I gave my zoology professor an apple. Now my toe catches the trigger. 
Occupy Zoo story. <laughs> Bang! I'm becoming a Pulitzer Prize! <laughs> <laughs> I like it seven times. <laughs> up, up, and away. Thank <laughs> you.